What's up, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls? Your boy Dredd is back with an episode of Nerd Talk. Here to give you guys my review of X-Men Apocalypse. And, um, yeah, this is a warning. So, I will be there will be spoilers throughout this review. Now, I do have a spoiler-free review. And uh, I made the review probably about a good hour ago with a YouTube fellow YouTuber by the name of Cali Kid E. And that video review is um, uploading shortly. And I will go ahead and put it in the link. But since this is a spoiler review, I'm going to go ahead and tell you guys how I'm going to do this. I'm going to give you guys three to four minutes of what I overall thought about the movie. Plot points, characters, story, all that other good stuff. And then I'm going to, you know, give you guys spoilers for the next three or four minutes of the review. Now, um, overall what I thought about the movie. Now... By this time, by this point, everybody's pretty much just superhero movied out. I mean, come on, this is, 2016 is arguably the year of the superhero movies. I mean, come on, we've had Deadpool, we've had Civil War, we've had Batman v Superman, we've had, um, of course, you know, X-Men Apocalypse, and we've still got Doctor Strange and Suicide Squad coming later in the year. I mean, come on, like, this is the best year for superhero movies in a long time. Now, as far as which, as far as, as far as which, uh, which movies I've ranked where, I'm going to save that for an entirely different video. But, uh, yeah, this was a very, it wasn't exceptional, it wasn't, oh my god, you have to run to the movie theater to see this. I mean, it won't kill you if you don't see it, but this is the movie that's going to end the first class trilogy. Because you know how you had the original, you know, X-Men trilogy, it started in 2000, X-Men 1, 2, then The Last Stand. Then we have um, First Class, Days of Future Past, which linked the X-Men universe to the previous um, trilogy. And we have X-Men Apocalypse. Now, I'm going to go ahead and say, um... That this movie, X Men Apocalypse, it was better than First Class, but it wasn't better than Days of Future Past. And I think Days of Future Past is probably the best movie, you know, the best X Men movie in the entire franchise. Well, it's a toss up between that and X Men 2, X Men United. But uh, now, the plot of the movie goes on um, well, if you guys stick, stuck around for the post credit scene for Days of Future Past, in Sabanor or Apocalypse, who's the world's first mutant. He's awake. He awakens after five thousand years to claim his rightful spot as the um, the ruler of the world. And he's been jumping from body to body, stealing the different powers of mutants over the centuries. And the thing is, that's pretty much everybody's biggest complaint. Like, the, like what you what is supposed to be the main plot point and the biggest strength of the movie ends up actually being like one of the movie's biggest weaknesses because Apocalypse is supposed to be an omega level mutant. He's supposed to be a planet busting mutant. And in this movie, he just didn't really seem like that big of a threat. But I'll, I'll get to that in a second, you know, when I talk about the spoilers. But, um, yeah, he didn't really seem like that big of a threat. He seemed like just another movie villain. It didn't seem like the stakes were that high. Well, besides when he starts um, destroying stuff. Once again, I'll talk about that when I get to the spoilers. But uh, also, his recruits for the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse. Now, as far as uh, character development, I mean, we get younger versions, we get introduced to younger versions of characters, we get introduced to younger Cyclops, younger Jean Grey, uh, younger Nightcrawler, Angel, who becomes Archangel, we get introduced to Storm, who, of course, you know, we get to see, you know, in later installments in the movie, and um, we get reintroduced to um, Professor X, of course, we get reintroduced to Beast, we get reintroduced to um, Havoc, uh, Alex Summers, we get reintroduced to him. And, uh, yeah, we, uh, there is, like, a lot of people say that there wasn't really that much, uh, they didn't really, um, touch on some, they touched on more characters than others, but by far, I think that Magneto pretty much has the best character development in the entire movie. And as I said in my spoiler-free version of the review, Magneto has always been billed as the bad guy. And the thing is, Magneto is not really a bad guy, he's just, his heart's in the right place, he just, he just has messed up motivations it's because you know he's a man with everything taken from him i mean because come on in the 1940s his parents were holocaust victims he, his parents were killed in the auschwitz concentration camp and in this movie um he has something else taken from him like i said i'll talk about that in the, you know in the spoiler section of this review and that drives him over the edge to want to become one of apocalypse's four horsemen and now when storm gets introduced you know she um if you guys read her origin story you know she's she was looked at as a goddess among her people, but then like she was um, kidnapped by gypsies and then goes to um, goes over to Egypt, where she gets found by where she's just a regular thief and she just you know just lives um, lives as a scraggler, lives as a, a street rat, a Latin reference. But uh, yeah, and then that's when Apocalypse finds her, it turns her into one of the horsemen, and Archangel. Well, re before he becomes Archangel, he's just a uh, a regular sideshow freak. Him and um, 
him and Nightcrawler were sideshow freaks. And Raven Darkholm, who's a uh, mystique, she finds um she finds a uh, Nightcrawler and then takes him to Professor X. And they also introduced I like how they introduced um Cyclops because it was it was simple, but it was to the point. It wasn't oh my god, it's complex. But, you know, he's a regular teen in high school and you know he's having, you know, vision problems and like his power is manifested when he was getting bullied at school, kind of like uh, how Iceman did, you know, in the previous X-Men trilogy. And I like how they did that, you know, they kept it short, simple, and to the point. And a lot of people are complaining about how they didn't really go in-depth with the relationship between Scott and um, Scott and Jean Grey. But that's what the previous trilogy and for the an what the animated series and the comic books is for. All the people, all the casual fans, like, don't really need to know it. I mean, well, the casual fans don't really need to be introduced to that. It's the hardcore fans who should already know that there's a relationship there and it doesn't develop until later. And that's what the next three movies, the next um, X-Men trilogy is going to be about. And I'm hoping that they do do the Phoenix Saga for the next three X-Men movies. Now, um, what I overall thought about the movie. Um... I would give the they okay they kind of overdid the special effects. So I'll give the special effects an eight. The story I'll give it a seven. The characters and character development I'll give it a seven point five. And just you know overall you know attention grabbing I'll probably give that also a seven point five. But overall my overall rating for this movie if I had to give it a letter grade I'll give it a solid C. And for my overall number rating I will give it a seven out of ten. Not an exceptional movie. But not a bad movie either. It's not as bad as all the critics on Rotten Tomatoes saying it. Now for the spoiler section of my review. Five seconds for you guys who have not seen the movie yet. Everybody going? Everybody hasn't seen the movie going? Alright, yeah. Now, um, Magneto's motivation. Um, he had his family killed. and when Because uh, he's trying to live a uh, regular life in Poland. And, um, yeah, they found out that... Um, at the plant that he was working at, he was working in the steel mill, and he saved one of the um, the workers from death by he had a um, a big metal vat of lava over him, and Magneto saved him, and that's when he was figured out as the mutant Magneto because he was going by another alias when he was in Poland, and they found out that well the the um, the local police force found out that he was Magneto, they said is this you? They held up a newspaper with um, him in the 1970s saying is this you? And then he says, yes, that's me. And he's, they kidnapped his daughter, or they took his daughter from him. And then they said, well, he said, well, you can take me, just don't take my daughter. And he, he found out that his daughter was a mutant too. Not quite the Scarlet Witch, but, you know, she had the power to call and control animals. And one of the policemen shot, um, shot his daughter through the chest, through, through the back with an arrow. And it, while his daughter was hugging his wife, while, while his daughter and his wife were hugging, the uh, local police force man shot them both with an arrow and then that caused him to go over the edge and kill him yeah and that's why he becomes war because there's pestilence there's war there's famine and then there's death there's apocalypse of four horsemen and how angel becomes archangel is kind of stupid well not stupid but it's kind of basic i mean he's, he finds him and then puts metal on his wings that's it and he turns Storm in sort of the same way where it's not really that complex. It's kind of simple, but, you know, they say less is more. They say simplicity is what matters. And um, Psylocke, who is pretty much always, you know, who is pretty much, you know, going to be one of his four horsemen. Now, um, there was a, now Quicksilver, he did have the best scene in the entire movie when um, they first found, when, uh, when Professor X was linked. They, um, they found out that Professor X could be linked to Apocalypse. When Apocalypse pretty much just jumped Professor X's head and caused um, an accident that destroyed the entire X-Men's mansion. Yeah, that mansion does get destroyed every three to five years. But yeah, um, <clears throat> Quicksilver had the best scene in the movie again. But um, the aftermath of that is not so great because Havoc, once again, this is a spoiler. Scott Summer's brother, um, he ends up uh, dying in the explosion. And um, Quicksilver, he says, for somebody to be as fast as me, I'm always late. That's the one person that he didn't save. And... Um, yeah, the, the, the one of the um, the also one of the uh, positive points of the movie was uh, they explored. Um, they really did get into Quicksilver a little bit more, and I am kind of um, gonna be. I'm, I'm kind of skeptical to see where they take it from there. You know, with Quicksilver story arc, and Jean Grey. Jean Grey had a nightmare that um, she saw the apocalypse. She saw it was nothing but fire. She says, 
I saw the apocalypse. I saw the end of the world. And she, you know, Professor X tried to show that it was just a dream. And she was having premonitions where she saw apocalypse. But the thing is, it's like, is apocalypse going to be the fall of the world? Is he going to be the reason why the world ends? Or is it going to be Phoenix herself because her power is so un uncontained? Now, this is where I hope that the Phoenix saga does come into play. Because that could be very well that sets up the next trilogy. Now, um, also... If you guys seen uh, the, the recent trailer, yes, Wolverine is in the movie. He's in the movie for about a good five minutes. He didn't have any dialogue at all. He just, and like I think that that actually helped in this movie too because this um, gave us kind of a taste of how violent and brutal that Wolverine three is gonna be because they they saw it, they, they took it through um, the Weapon X program and also the post credit scene scene showed where he gets his blood taken from a vial and then. Um, it showed like, hmm, like, hey, that's the same company that funded the Weapon X program. So I'm going to be excited to see that too. But yeah, he didn't have any dialogue, but as, as good as his action scenes were, he didn't really need it. And also they make a joke that says, well, hmm, I wonder if we've seen the last of that guy. Nope, no you haven't. Revert, uh, refers to the um, last series of X-Men. And also, I like how, um, but even though that Jubilee and all the other characters like in the movie, the new introduced characters didn't have that much dialogue, I think that was for the best because that sets up a whole new trilogy. But there's a joke in the movie about them going to see um, Return of the Jedi in, in uh, 1983. And there was a, they made a joke saying, like, hmm, now that's how you end a trilogy. And it's like, hmm, I wish all trilogies ended that way. And then, and then they also make a joke saying, hmm, but if they end a trilogy bad, if they end a trilogy good, there'll be no need for a new one. I was like, ha ha, I got that because it alluded to the original X-Men trilogy where X-Men the X-Men 3 The Last Stand wasn't that good. And um, how X-Men First Class and X-Men Days of Future Past were better than them. But, uh, yeah, I like how they kind of, like, broke the fourth wall in that sense. Now, as far as the um, overall ending fight. Like I said, I thought X-Men Apocalypse, well, I thought that Apocalypse was going to be a, a greater threat. But he did do things like uh, make the Earth move and cause earthquakes and natural disasters. And, um, and even uh, launched all the Earth's, Earth's nukes into the atmosphere, which kind of makes you, why didn't they explode? But, uh, yeah, now the Earth doesn't have any nukes, but I'm pretty sure they'll make some more. But, uh, yeah, and this, if the scene you see where uh, he grows big because he can um, he can control matter in, in his own, pretty much, his, pretty much his own density, he did that in when he was fighting um, Professor X inside of his own mind. So he doesn't do that physically. He doesn't manifest his powers physically. He only does it in mental form. And I don't know if they alluded, well, they probably alluded this, they alluded this in the comics too, where um, after Apocalypse is where, um, where pretty much Scott, well, not Scott, but where pretty much uh, Professor X um, has a link to everyone in the world. He didn't need Cerebro, at least anymore. He can link to people, but he, he pretty much has a link to Apocalypse to where he can pretty much find anyone on the planet, you know, without that technology, that, uh, that device Cerebro. <laughs> kind of stumbling over my words here. But, uh, yeah. Now, where are they going to take the um, where are they going to take the franchise further? Like I said, I hope they do the Phoenix Saga because they left it open ended. Now, I do got to talk about this. Everybody's going to be complaining about um, everybody's going to be complaining about plot holes in the movie. Like, uh, why did they do? And like, plot holes is kind of essential in all superhero movies. They actually kind of need plot holes because a lot of people going away, well, walking away from the movie, like, well, why did they touch on this? Why didn't they go more in-depth with this? Why didn't they explain this more? Plot points are necessary because it gives you a reason to go and watch the next movie. So you kind of need plot points because if they explain everything in all the movies, not, not only will it be overcrowded and not only will the casual fans not get it, but it will give the hardcore fans, it won't give the hardcore fans a reason to go see the next movie. And that's why. But yeah, anyway, like I said, overall, I would give this movie a 7 out of 10. Just an average, slightly above average rating. If you've seen the movie, um... Comment and let me know what you think. Uh, what was your overall rating? If you had to give it a number rating or a letter grade, what would you give it? Anyway, thank you guys for watching. I'll be back with another video soon. Peace.